I am Laura Blyle. I am the Director of External Engagement at the University of Illinois Research Park. Uh, it's nice to have such a, uh, a, a wide audience for this event today, and that's partially uh, due to the work that we do at the Research Park related to um, uh, our helping entrepreneurs, not just in Champaign-Urbana. I think many people know that we do that uh, at the Research Park, focusing on uh, tech entrepreneurs, but that we also have resources and services for folks across uh, primarily downstate Illinois, but downstate is actually a fairly broad area. So, um, and then also through our Illinois uh, University Incubator Network clients. So we reach a wide perspective and broad swath of various different entrepreneurs and um, connected to us in various different ways. Natalie Kenny Marquez, who is our speaker today, is, is one of the people who is, our, is associated with our, uh, our efforts to help entrepreneurs across the state and, and her background and expertise in PR and marketing um, is the reason why we connect her to our program and to entrepreneurs more broadly. Um, Natalie, for, the, for those of you locally who are familiar in Champaign-Urbana, Natalie has worked in the community um, for many years in various different roles, but um, in the last several years uh, uh, went independent and has grown her own uh, marketing firm and manages, works with many clients um, from a wide variety of contexts. Some of you, if you're in the foodie world, might know Natalie from her work working with um, the farmers markets and local growers and producers, but she has such a wide variety of clients um, and expertise. So her company is Grow Marketing and Communications, which provides marketing strategy, brand management, content planning, and creative support for startups, small businesses, and nonprofits. Um, so thank you, Natalie, so much for joining us. I think we are ready to pass the baton over to you and hear what you have to say. I think this was a good, uh, 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 definitely a, uh, a tantalizing headline topic for us. Um, you know, Mark, and I'm sure this is probably uh, something we could do every year. We could lather, rinse, repeat this title for next year too in January, but I don't think it would have the same cachet as it does this year, knowing what everyone's been through. So in the last 10 months or so. So thank you so much, Natalie. We're excited to hear what you have to say. And like Sherry mentioned in the chat, if you didn't see it earlier, that we are recording this uh, uh, event and we will have it up on our social media channels later. So thanks again, Natalie, for being with us. And uh, we look forward to hearing your presentation. Awesome. Thank you for the introduction and the opportunity to speak with all of you today. I recognize some of the names as folks have hopped on to uh, this chat. So um, fun to talk to all of you. Like Laura said, my um, background is pretty diverse in the folks that I get to help uh, with their marketing strategies. Um, food and local ag is certainly a huge component of my background and still is um, in the clients that I work with now. Um, but also throw in some graduates from Enterprise Works and Research Park, a uh, med device company in town, as well as a handful of restaurants, which let me tell you, after we switched to tier one, uh, what yesterday, I've, I've been talking to restaurants for the past 12 hours of like, what do we do? So um, like Laura said, you know, 10 tips for 2021 definitely packs a punch this year more than ever because it's kind of ever changing. Um, 2020 was a wild year and I know that we're already you know 19 days into the new year but we got slammed with another change yesterday for a lot of us in this region and so it's like uh, what can we do right now with our marketing team to tackle the new year and I recognize when I say marketing team that some of you might not even have a marketing person which that is okay I work with a lot of companies where the CEO does marketing and then the CEO does sales and then sometimes engineering does marketing and it's just all over the place. So um, knowing that you come from a diverse group of business, uh, we will kind of wing it in how we talk about marketing team. So the first tip that I have for you is shorter planning periods. Um, 
I know that this isn't specifically marketing related, but it's important for your marketing efforts to work on a shorter uh, period for planning what you're doing and what you're talking about and when you're talking about it. Um, this could be weekly or this could be monthly, but some kind of regular review where you have it already in your calendar with the people that need to talk about it and go over things like your budget. You know, are you using your resource, resources wisely right now? Um, for quite a few of my clients, there weren't trade shows these past nine months, and that was a big bulk of their marketing budget. And so instead, a lot of those shows went virtual. Um, raise your hand if any of you have participated in a virtual trade show or exhibition over the past months. Um, I got to tell you, they, they are, there's a variety of different kinds of um, platforms used. Some have been awesome and some I dreaded <laughs> logging on, but your team needs to be ready and prepared for these things. And um, if it makes sense in your budget to, you know, emphasize certain virtual parts of the show, um, to take people off the platform and uh, to your own website, you know, talk about these things in your weekly and monthly reviews of your, your marketing. Um, also make sure that your sales and manufacturing folks from your company are aligned with what you're doing. Uh, it's really important that if you start ramping up marketing, is your manufacturing going to be able to keep up with it? Do you have the supply to keep up with the demand? And is everyone in alignment of your plans moving forward? Um, consider maybe even inviting some of the folks from uh, manufacturing and um, sales to join you in your in your marketing meetings that you're having regularly just to get their feedback. And speaking of feedback, ask your sales team what they need. I know that the sales folks that I work with, their jobs have changed a lot. They're not, you know, so much boots on the ground going to make sales calls in the traditional sense like before COVID. So ask them if there are things from the marketing um, department or marketing person or design person that you work with that can help them do their job um, more efficiently uh, as you move into the new year and these next months of COVID. My next tip for you is nurturing your email list. Uh, show of hands, I'll try to scroll through the faces on the side of my screen, but do you have an email list? If your camera is not on, you could just annotate or do a high five or something like this, but um, email is really important right now. I, I realize that we're getting a lot of emails and open rates for email um, worldwide are about 15% right now, but that's a great time to figure out how you can nurture your list to be more impactful and efficient with your time. One way that you can do this is revisit your send dates and times and adjust those. Um, I know in the past when I would send emails or even send out press releases or things like that, there are always certain days of the week and times of the day when you would send those out for, um, you know, actually being opened or being impactful. And because of COVID, everyone's work hours are changed, have changed. And we are seeing that people are opening things later in the day, maybe they're um, adjusting their work-life balance if they're working from home and they're checking their emails all times of day. So um, I've been testing and sending things out between 2 and 3 p.m. as opposed to 8 or 9 a.m. in the morning, but I still do keep um, my emails sent on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday if it's kind of a repetitive uh, newsletter style of email. Another thing that you can do right now to help your email list and email um, efforts are to check your subject lines. Avoid using things that could be considered spammy, um, anything related to COVID, coronavirus, epidemic, any of those things in your email list um, that could trigger it being some kind of spam. So really test, test your subject lines and see what works. Uh, a huge thing that I'm going to repeat and like every other tip moving forward talks about segmenting your audience and specifically this is subscribers in your email list. Um, make sure that you um, are working to meet your audience where they're at and providing them with information that they'll benefit from hearing, not that you think that they want to hear and that will certainly um, benefit your open rate for your emails, click throughs and things like that. 
And to figure out what they want to hear, ask them. I know that people are spending more time actually completing surveys or providing feedback than ever before. Um, I've had a client where we sent out, it was a pretty lengthy um, customer survey to current customers on their email list. And I wasn't so sure what the open and response rate to that survey would be. And it ended up being like 80 out of 100 of the surveys we sent out came back and she got great information on what people want to see in the emails, definitely more promotions. We're going to talk about that in a minute, but take the time to ask your subscribers what they want to hear. And then maybe even share that in those weekly and monthly marketing meetings that I was talking about. That's great information for the whole company to hear, no matter what department or segment of the company they belong to. Uh, maybe I should press the button. Uh oh, let's press this button. There we go. My next tip for you is to develop your personas. So we've, I, I hinted to segmenting your audience in the last tip, but um, annotate or raise your hand or whatever you want to do to let me know if you have fully baked audience personas for your business or your company. And I'll scroll through to see if you, oh, not so much. Well, I was going to say, if you do now also raise your hand, if you've circled back to these personas since COVID, um, if you don't have any, now's a great time to put some together. But if you do have some, now's a great time to revisit them because our audience and their buying habits have changed tremendously since COVID. Uh, you definitely need new audience personas and you need them right now. So write that down in a little post-it note to work with your team to put together audience personas. Um, they Audience personas represent um, a portion of your audience that you can identify um, things about them, their buying habits, their interest, where they get information from, how they respond to information, demographics, things like that. That's all very important to know, um, especially as you adjust your marketing and your messaging um, in 2021. Uh, identifying segments within your audience will help you not just blanket the whole group, but really hone in on, on the people and what they want. That survey that I talked about and tip number two that you can send through email is a great way to find insights about how their buying habits have changed. Um, what's important to them. Uh, so much of, of who we are and how we get information and how we respond has changed since COVID and will over the next few months as well. So understanding that, spending a lot of time in the process to understand that will be highly beneficial in everything you do marketing related moving forward in 2021. So if you don't take anything away from today's conversation, except for developing your personas, I'll feel like I've at least left you with something really great for 2021. Uh, reviewing your message is my fourth tip for you. I teased to it a little bit just a moment ago, but is your messaging still relevant to the people that you're targeting uh, for your business? We might need to change what we're saying and how we're saying it and what it looks like given the changes in our environment around us this past year. One um, way that you can do this is through developing a really consistent brand across your digital presence. Um, so this means your website and your social media, um, making sure that your online presence is uh, a priority. If you can't see people in person, having a good digital presence is really important. I have a client that had a, a pretty decent website, and we'll talk more about websites in a moment, but a pretty decent website, but their content on their website was all over the place. The user experience was kind of like, click here, click here, go back, a lot of text, a lot of text. And they recently updated their website, um, reviewed their content, made things more timely and relevant to right now. And they've seen a 45% increase in their traffic online and online orders just since updating their, their website. Um, and especially tying that into their Facebook and Instagram efforts, just building a consistency in what they're saying and how they're saying it and making sure it's updated to be timely to right now has been very beneficial for them. 
Another thing is to view your message from different perspectives. Uh, look at your brand from the outside in and also think about your message from the inside out. What is the vision for your brand? Has it evolved during COVID? What does your team think internally and what do folks think of it externally? And also consider your marketplace within your industry. You don't want to confuse your brand with your competitors. So finding a way to be authentic and unique in your messaging, um, but maybe not so unique to where you can't be consistent in how you uh, use that voice and tone across your, your digital platforms. And I keep saying uh, consistent, consistent, but the whole point is to come up with a clear and distinct voice and image for your company and stick to it in everything that you do. Um, a, a exercise that I lead through, uh, lead my clients through most every time when we start working together is um, coming up with what the company's talking points are and key benefits and elevator pitch, and then figuring out how to make small tweaks with those, not moving away from them, but how can you make small tweaks in those to align with the different audience personas? And then how do you then translate that into uh, different pages on your website and different platforms that you use for social media. Again, finding your customers where they're at. Along the lines of messaging, it also comes storytelling. And that's my fifth tip for you. Storytelling is a little bit harder than coming up with uh, just, you know, your, your content for your website and your social. Um, but storytelling is an important component in your brand communications. It's focused on narrative and how the narrative engages your audience. Um, it also builds authenticity to your brand and really helps to relate who you are as a business. Um, storytelling is known to drive engagement and make a significant impact when you do it in a way that's authentic and memorable. Stories are 22 times more memorable than like a table or a chart or something like that, um, just facts and figures alone. And they also tend to light up parts of the brain that link to feelings and hearing and taste and even smell. So for my food businesses or um, farmers and things like that, we use storytelling a lot because it's impactful and memorable. Uh, but not all storytelling can be memorable if it's not relatable. And relatable stories, just so that you know, don't always come from you as the business. They come from the people that utilize your products and your services in the form of uh, relatable interactions and testimony. Um, it can be a little daunting to reach out to customers to ask them to participate in some kind of video or photo storytelling from your, your marketing, but um, give it a try because I think you'll be surprised. We've had some great testimonies from the clients, uh, customers, and they're excited to tell their story and eager and will share it everywhere. And making sure that storytelling is easy to share is huge in it being successful. Um, I think we've probably all seen some stories or um, advertisements from places like poopery or squatty potty and those are very shareable because they're silly and they're funny but um, that's not exactly the route that I'm trying to get you to go but shareable stories are ones that you can visually bring to life. Um, you may not need unicorns and glitter and things like that like those companies use but using some kinds of illustrations Video, 3D renderings are a great way to supplement the storytelling um, in that narrative. And lastly, there's no point in doing any of this if, you're, if you don't have some kind of call to action. What is your goal with, the, with your storytelling? What are you trying to drive people to do? Defining your call to action in the storytelling and then working backwards using storytelling to achieve it is, is the most you know, is the place to start in, in putting a story together. Um, I usually figure out what that goal is and then figure out how to work backwards in a lot of the different marketing things that I do with my clients, but specifically for storytelling. It's kind of like putting a storyboard together. Um, I, I always go to the back of the magazine or the back of the book first and then start over again, but, you know, figure out where you want to be at and then work towards that.
talking really fast here. So I'll try to slow down for tip number six, which is dive into your website. Um, I've seen some really beautiful websites, but are they, are they really that great? Now take a step back and think about the, your website or the website that you work with. Um, is it something that should be updated or have you recently updated it since COVID? Um, one thing to think about and a really easy um, step to take in updating your website is looking at the back end and improving your SEO. Uh, what are the keywords that your audience searches for and how are those keywords relate to your industry and your business? Thinking about that and figuring out what those are and incorporating those into your page titles and descriptions, SEO description, those are all great things that you can do right now that are pretty simple to do. It just takes a little bit of time to put it all together and make sure you're optimizing the back end. Another thing is making sure that you have a photo, uh, a social share photo related to your pages. That way when you share something from your website, especially on Twitter, it doesn't come up with a little blank page as the icon. Um, so go through and double check these things and make sure the back end of your site is off to a good start. Another thing that you can do with your website right now, if you're not doing it already, is to publish high value content. Um, a show of hands or annotations, do any of you publish blogs on your site or case studies or white papers or articles similar to that? I'll scroll through to see if there are responses. But those are all things that you can think about um, in 2021. One thing that I like to do at the beginning of the year or try to do at the end of the year prior, but most likely it turns out to be the beginning of the year, is coming up with some ideas for topics that you can talk about on a weekly or monthly basis. I might even stretch that to quarterly right now um, because we're still kind of in, in flux. Um, before all of this, I would do a whole 12 month and have it all planned out for the entire year, but that might be pushing it a little bit right now. But think about what people are searching for, how they're searching for it, what words they're using and come up with content that speaks to that, but that is also authentic to your business. And then most importantly with your website, uh, especially right now, as you're trying to gather more information from your customers to learn about who they are, is offer outlets for, your, for um, questions and concerns and feedback. And I realize that that can be a scary thing to make it super easy for people to give feedback and response, but that's also really important to establish that communication. If you're not seeing some of these people in person as regularly, um, this is a, another option that you can use to get their feedback, hear what they have to say, and then most importantly, follow up with them. Don't just let it hang in the internet uh, universe follow up with them, ask them what, what more they can offer you and feedback, how you can respond and work with them and let them feel like they've been heard. And then take that back to those weekly and monthly meetings I suggested in tip number one. And as we wrap up tip number six for diving into your website, remember that some of this takes a little bit of time. So um, starting it now in January is a great, great idea and over time, you'll start to improve your SEO. Your pages will start to be built a little more correctly as you publish new information, and you'll start hearing more feedback from your um, customers, and you'll really be set up great for rolling into hopefully a more open summer and fall here. Press the wrong button again, you guys. Here we go. Tip number seven is to consider your e-commerce game. I was a little hesitant to put this in here, not, not knowing if folks are selling products online or not, but I know quite a few of the clients that I work with have started to sell things online because of COVID. Um, so I, I think it's still important to add this in here uh, just as um, something that could be helpful to you or one of your colleagues, um, but to consider your e-commerce game. 73% of consumers in the US have changed their shopping habits and behaviors because of the pandemic. I think we can all agree that we've changed some ways that we have shopped. And the important thing to know is 
Of these 73%, a high degree of them had the intention to continue this even after all of this is over. So think about what that means for your business and the products and services that you are trying to um, sell or share uh, with your customers. One way to do this is putting an online store on your website. Um, if you haven't already offered products to sell online uh, in 2020, consider a really basic plugin for your website or uh, some way to allow folks to shop your products and services in 2021. It doesn't have to be very big. It can be like some customer favorites or just a couple of things to test out and really understand the process of doing this online. Um, and then once you get the hang of that, then consider expanding the offerings that you put in that online store as kind of the phase two of this. Um, that might be adding not only new products, but maybe add-ons or customizations to products or special deals to draw in new customers and re-engage in existing customers. And kind of the phase three of all this with your e-commerce game is to expand your promotional strategy online. Um, VIP promos or daily deals or free shipping, some of these things that you can incorporate into your e-commerce is, is great. Um, I know that one of the, the customers that I work with have a brick and mortar here in Champaign, but they also have their entire inventory online. And after we updated their um, e-commerce portion of their business back in November, they're getting twice as many online orders every week as they were before because we put the whole inventory on there. Um, we took free shipping into consideration and so that made it even easier and offering curbside because they also have a brick and mortar here in Champaign. So those are things that will help you reach new audience or um, re-engage your existing customers in the time of COVID, um, but also moving forward in, into 2021. My eighth tip for you goes to social media. We couldn't have 10 marketing tips without talking about social media. Um, and it's all about building consistent connections. Um, some of us may be really tired of social media right now. Some of us may be completely addicted to it. Some of us may have taken it off their phones and their screen time has gone down. But you know, we're all we're all in, in different boats here. So um, really the thing for your business that's most important is to encourage engagement that is authentic in 2021. Um, another thing is to not overcommit on social media. And I, I say this to every single one of my clients, especially ones whose profiles I, in, I inherit and they've got something on, on everything you could think of. Um, and something new pops up that's trendy, well, they're on that too, but they're only posting like once or twice or never, or they don't know their passwords. So figure out a way to be consistent in your social media. And maybe that means not adding new platforms, but instead new features. Stories is a great thing to consider. Um, I think more and more businesses are starting to use stories. Maybe they've had some more time to figure out how to use them over the past nine, 10 months. Um, but using uh, stories is a great way to be authentic, raw, and humanize your business and um, spread the word about new products or create a sense of urgency for a promotion maybe that you're running on your online store or something like that. So if you can grab a pen and a piece of paper, I'm going to give you some topics um, or ideas that you can weave into your stories for your business for social media. Uh, one is behind the scenes content of employees at work or projects underway. Your customers might not be in the store to see you as often or be in your business as often as before. So some behind the scenes content could be great. Uh, customer reviews and testimonials. This is another way that you can uh, weave in those stories into your stories. Sneak previews of exciting news uh, launches or sales. This ties into exclusive promotions just for the people that follow you. Um, quick tips or mini trainings, things like that, that your employees can be a part of. There might be a lot of faces within your business, but not everyone gets to see them. So loop them into the, the stories that you share on social. 
uh, information about your company and values. That's really important right now. I know a lot of people are purposefully uh, using certain products or visiting certain businesses because of their company values align with their own. So share those. Uh, I think that's a, a great way to be authentic. Uh, highlight employees. That's another great thing. If you've got new folks that have joined or um, people that are doing some pretty awesome things within your company right now, uh, feel free to highlight that in your stories. Two other things, additional resources that you push out every time you do a blog post or a webinar or have a download. That's something you can share by stories as well. And then maybe even a Q&A with the uh, faces behind your brand, like who, who's involved and how, have you, how far have you come and what have you been doing to push your company, your product and services forward? All great content to leverage in your social media stories. So tip number nine, is video email. So we talked about regular email uh, and sending to your email list. That's one kind of uh, audience that your business works with. This one is kind of more for sales specific. Um, video email is a great way to take the place of that face-to-face -face interaction when you are um, establishing maybe first or second contact with uh, leads. So um, video email. I use a platform called um, Hippo Video. I am neither sponsoring nor endorsing them, but that's just the one that I use and have um, have been using over the past few months. But uh, it's it's a plugin straight to my Google email, so I can go to send it, compose a new email, but I can do it through Hippo Video. And instead of typing a long thing about, hey, I'd love to, oh, this is. I would probably take more time to figure out what I was going to say, but on the, on a on a whim here, I'd say, hey, it's great to meet you, Sherry. Um, I'm I wish I could meet you in in person, but I'd like to at least put a face with the name. I know we've emailed a couple of times, but I'm passing along some information. Click on the link below to find out more. Uh, let me know when a good time to meet is, and I'll get that on the calendar. So something like that, where it's a little more um, personable. The, the video embeds directly into the email. So it's not like they have to click a link. When you open the email, you see the little thumbnail there. I referenced clicking a link below. Well, that link actually takes someone to a landing page where you can have other little videos that you've created that help explain a product or sell a product or answer questions. Um, it really adds a personal touch to the email. And with the average employee getting about 120 emails a day, Maybe just one that is a little bit different than the others will help you with that open rate and also the engagement. Because the goal here is to, to um, you know, really try to find a way to create those personal connections in a virtual world. And for sales, it can be really difficult right now. So this is one great way to be able to do that. Um, I also like it internally for answering questions instead of a long format email where you're trying to answer a bunch of questions in a, a CC of like 20 people um, that can't seem to align their calendars to meet, to solve a problem. Maybe a video email would be helpful from an internal perspective too. I know that's not a familiar uh, scenario for any of you or anything like that, but video email is a great uh, way to at least give that a try. Also, um, one platform that does video email uh, claims there's a 36.9% higher close rate uh, with companies using personalized videos for sales than just email alone. I'm not sure I can match that stat with my personal use yet, but it's worth giving it a try. And last but not least, don't ever be too proud to ask for help. Uh, marketing teams often benefit from objective and outside perspective and analysis of what you're doing and what you're planning to do and what you've been doing. Um, if you have ever thought about these three bullet points on the screen, and I'll read them because they're important, but if you've ever thought about these things, it's, a, it's probably a, a, a um, good time to ask for outside help. Um, 
if you're, has your company done a marketing health checkup in the midst of the pandemic? If not, it might be time to ask for help. Did you make any operational changes in 2020? Um, if you did, which I, I'm confident you probably did, uh, it's time to ask for some help for this year. And have you caught yourself asking what's next? Uh, you know, like I mentioned, maybe right before we started, I have uh, a couple of restaurant clients who I was on the phone with last night and they called and they're like, well, what's, what's next? What, what do we do? How do we change our messaging? How do we make sure people know that there's limited dining and it'll, it'll be inside and it'll happen like this? You know, what do we do next? Um, if you catch yourself asking things like that, um, it's probably a good time to ask for some outside help. And you have a lot of resources. Um, the folks on this call put together a lot of opportunities for your business to flourish here in Champaign-Urbana and Champaign County and Illinois. Uh, so take advantage of those. Um, I'm always happy to chat and see how things are going. Um, I am on Zoom all the time so we can Zoom or socially distant meet for uh, a, a, a hello and to talk about something, but um, there are so many resources available and it's okay to ask for help. Um, if you, if you think you might need some here in, in the next year. So that was my 10 tips for you in updating your marketing efforts for 2021. I would be happy to answer any questions you might have or go back through because I chatted really fast. Thank you, Natalie. So speaking of asking for help, I did put in the chat the link to how to access Natalie is a resource for your business, so feel free to check that out. Um, and if you have any questions about it, of course, reach out to us or you can reach out to Natalie individually. Um, I didn't necessarily see any questions yet in the chat. If anybody wants to, of course, um, pop on and ask a question, you're more than welcome to. Um, I just wanted to uh, ask a question about your planning year. I think this goes back to tip one, which is, you know, how the planning strategy, do you have any tools or anything that you would recommend um, that you've been using with clients or um, for that planning strategy to kind of change your mindset of timelines and things like that? So sure. I guess I'm thinking of like, I don't know if it's a project management tool. I mean, like tool can mean anything, so. Well, I use a lot of different tools because I meet a lot of my clients where they're at in their business uh, planning and process and, and growth actually. So for some businesses, it's a Google spreadsheet and it's nothing too tech savvy. And we go through that and work through that together. Um, I also use Asana um, for keeping track of goals and revisiting those. And we use uh, Asana to check in regularly to see where we're at with things. Um, we do quarterly planning through Asana. Um, of course, we use Slack for a couple of clients as well and um, categorize different efforts and different channels, including the right people. Um, I also use platforms like Sprout Social for helping to plan out social media efforts moving forward and keep tabs on what has performed and what hasn't in the past. Um, it really just depends on where that business is at and how much capacity they have to really dive into those things. For a small restaurant, not a lot of capacity. And so I maintain a lot of that uh, through spreadsheets and weekly check-ins. Um, but for other companies that are a little more uh, mature in, in their planning efforts, uh, we go to um, platforms like Asana and check in very regularly. So I see a question in the chat from Jason Berg. So he says, I'd love to hear more about email surveys. Can you talk about the kinds of questions or themes that seem to be working well? Sure. So the past few surveys um, I've sent out, I use two different platforms. Um, Typeform was one and then SurveyMonkey, which we all know is the other. Uh, it, it really depends on the audience and the questions that we're planning to ask. Um, so for the uh, store here in town, um, the audience, I wanted something to be 
fun and easy to go through and colorful and really bring their brand into the survey as well. So it wasn't just like a boring set of little dots to check in boxes and things like that. And so we spent a long time as a company asking the employees that are also part of their customer service team, you know, what are you hearing from people um, when they used to come into the store or what would you like to know, know more about to provide better services to the customers when they come in? Um, what products do people want to see in the store? What colors, what styles, how much are people willing to spend? Um, are people enjoying the website? Is the shopping experience been better than it was before? Things like that. Um, so that was what we use Typeform for and that's what we did for this local um, women focused business here in town. Um, when we use SurveyMonkey uh, recently, let's see, which one should I use an example of? Um, the most recent survey that we did was uh, determining a product name. And so we sent a pretty basic uh, uh, survey monkey to a list of uh, different people in our audience to ask them what their thoughts and feelings were for a product name. And that really gave us some great feedback for that specific effort. Uh, and we ended up going with the top pick. So rebranding is fun. <laughs> yeah, I think people like to ha uh, like to be asked for their opinions too. So uh, they love to give input. And if they feel like they've been included in the process, their investment level goes up in that business as well. Um, but it's also important to share those results that you get from your surveys with more than just your marketing and communication folks. Let others know that, um, you know, it's important for others in your team to also feel included in the effort. Um, another question was, do you use any incentives to get people to complete the surveys? Sometimes, yes. Um, there was one survey that we sent out and the response was uh, just terrible. <laughs> so then we sent it out again with an incentive uh, of a gift card and we got a great response. Um, so. Sometimes it can be as easy as complete this survey and you'll get 20% off your next purchase or complete this survey and receive a free gift with your next purchase. Um, gift cards are another one. Uh, sometimes like with the uh, product name survey, we didn't incentivize anything and it still got a good feedback, but it was a very captive audience that are typically rather in, engaged so we got, um, they were already kind of invested in the process. So if for comp businesses that may have changed their products or services due to either limitations or other reasons during the pandemic, do you have any recommendations for how they position that with their clients? So if a client is used to X service, but you've dropped that service and now you're at doing Y, uh, just curious your thoughts on how to position that with your clients. Sure. Um, I think transparency is important and just being honest in the, in the communication of what's going on and why and keeping people updated. And I know that takes a lot of extra uh, effort um, and maybe sometimes that message isn't always heard if you have to make a lot of updates, but at least with the restaurant clients that I've got as an example, um, they've been pretty much the hardest hit of, of all of them um, through COVID is, you know, keeping folks posted of hours and business times and takeout and curbside. Um, and that has been very important for them. Um, for other clients that have, you know, changed their product offerings, Maybe it's because they couldn't get some of the components of that product or manufacturing has been delayed or shipments are being delayed. Um, it's a great chance to talk about what's going on, just be transparent about it and keep people posted. Um, if people have placed orders for things and they're really delayed, you know, sometimes a phone call is more helpful than an email. And I forgot to mention, not everybody likes to talk on the phone either. So that's why video email is sometimes a, a good chance to tell that, uh, tell that story as well. 
So we have a couple more questions. Um, how often should the reminders be sent to the clients regarding email surveys based on your experience? I'm kind of giggling because I got reminded to fill out a survey today from the university, which I was kind of irritated about because I'm like, how many times are you gonna remind me to fill this thing out? It wasn't like anything that was mandatory. But anyway, I finally did it just to get them off my back, but I don't know if that's gonna work, so. <laughs> um. I don't really have a rule of thumb on the number of reminders. I think it, it kind of ties back to a the audience that you're sending it to, um, and also your your kind of timeline and need for a response. Um, I think a follow up email or two is fine uh, over the course of a week after sending an email, but maybe not like daily. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Um, another last or last question we have in the chat anyway, do some clients resist video email? And if so, how do you help them overcome their shyness or resistance? Uh, some will respond back with a video. That is an option in a lot of these platforms, but it's also an option to send back a, a traditional text email as well. And so um, really from my end, it's it's helpful for them to see a face and put a face with a name if we've been emailing but haven't had a chance to meet. And then they'll usually respond by text um, and then schedule a, a call so that we can see each other face to face. Um, so there are folks that are shy in front of the camera, um, but they do have the option to send a text response. Sure. Well, we have a bunch of folks who are hopping off and it is almost 10 to the hour. So um, I think we will wrap it up there. As we mentioned, um, there are ways and, and Sherry uh, put in the chat um, explaining parameters of this program that have changed, of course, over COVID. And so there are ways that you can access um, and request time with Natalie. And we have many other resources depending on the type of business that you are. Um, in. So feel free to take a look. And if you have any questions, of course, reach out to us directly. Um, thank you so much, Natalie. Lots of kudos in the chat. So I hope you have a chance to look at that before you go. But um, for a very timely, concise, and actionable program, we really appreciate uh, you putting this together and coming on today to chat with our audience. So thank you so much, Natalie. Thank you very much.